Yeah, well, let's get some more reaction to this. We can now speak to journalist and United We Stand fanzine editor Andy Mitten. Andy, good to speak to you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, what do you think will be the reaction of the United fans to this news of a bid that has come in from a Qatari businessman? It depends which United fans you ask. I think it will be an issue which divides Manchester United's fan base, which is huge. It's a very broad church. It's global support, vastly different demographics. Um, there was a survey which was published on The Athletic, who I also write for today, which put um, the bid from Sir Jim Ratcliffe in the Ineos group as the preferred bid, if you like, from those fans surveyed. If you look online and look onto Twitter, you'd see that this uh, Qatari-led bid is far more popular and I've been watching some of your previous guests and covering the different issues there. Uh, I think there are certain facts here, apart from the rain group being absolutely delighted that another major bidder has come into this. And the ideal scenario for the, them and the, the Glazers, their clients, is the auction. And they're going to make a huge profit uh, by selling Manchester United. I don't think that their takeover should ever have been allowed to have happened in 2005 but it did happen they're going to make a huge amount of profit from it and it's what comes next which concerns me most for Manchester United because the Glazers are going fans will be happy about that so the bar has been set low there so Old Trafford does need redeveloping I've been writing about that for 15 years now and the stadium has stood still the training ground needs some investment as well you've seen the results on the pitch you've seen how wealthy some of Manchester United's rivals are now. But you've got issues such as the human rights in Qatar. You've seen the statements from Amnesty International. Is there a perfect bid? I'm not sure that there is. I think fans have always had an issue with the owners at Manchester United. I've been editing United We Stand since 1989. I've seen several owners or leading executives. None of them have been popular with the supporters, even when Manchester United have been winning absolutely everything. I'm sad that it's that it's come to this. I think Manchester United is strong enough to stand on its own two feet, but I also appreciate that when the club went public in 1991, that it became a, a public asset which could be brought by anybody. And it's rather than just being traded locally now, it's become international, it's become global. And you can see why it is an, a, attractive to a potential bidder, such as the bid that we've seen come in tonight, such as the one from Sir Jim Ratcliffe, and maybe other bids as well. I'm concerned about the match-going community, about issues uh, like ticket prices, like the atmosphere at Old Trafford, but there are so many different facets to this. There's so much to unpick on this, and I think the fan base will be divided. One of the key messages that I think uh, Sheikh Jassim wanted to get out there in his statement, Andy, was that this bid will be completely debt-free. What's your reaction to that? Is that significant? It's hugely significant because debt has been significant. The, the Glazer family loaded debt onto Manchester United, which which hampered the fortunes of the club. If you if you imagine Manchester United as an Olympic swimmer ploughing along and suddenly you've got to do that with 16 bricks on your back, whereas Manchester City, because of the way that they're funded, they get a real lift and they quickly equaled themselves out and Manchester City became more successful. It's also true that Manchester United spent a lot of money and spent it quite badly. Recruitment was bad, but the team are actually in a better place now. And um, I'm concerned also that there's good people there, that they are kept on. The, the manager, Eric Ten Hag, is doing a very, very good job. And I'd like it to be right for him. Uh, I asked him in December about uh, a potential takeover and what it would mean, and he said... Uh, from his understanding, it would only be positive, more investment. And I think a lot of fans would buy that and would like to see investment. A lot of football fans would like a benefactor, a sugar daddy, call it what you like. Manchester United don't actually need anybody. They're big enough and strong enough to stand on their own two feet. But I'm not going to be able to do that because the club is up for sale. And anybody who spends a huge amount of money on it, three, four, five, six billion, uh, is going to want a return on that. I've read the statement. It, in, on some ways, it seems too good to be true. That there's going to be this utopia where everything's going to be wonderful for Manchester United. But looking beyond Manchester United, I think one of the good things about the Premier League is that it is so competitive. And I think that competitive edge has got to stay for all clubs. I don't like 
uh, what has happened at PSG or, or at Manchester City where you get one club or at Chelsea or at Newcastle United. I've got doubts about the way that football is structured. And that's why I'd, I'd welcome an independent regulator. That's why I've seen encouraging signs with that. And we'll see what comes next, but the fan base will be divided. Andy, you touched on the statement there because it seems to be hitting all the right notes, talking about uh, seeking to place the fans at the heart of Manchester United once again, um, restoring the club to its former glories, talking about investment in both the men's, the women's teams, the infrastructure, the wider Manchester community. I mean, what do you make of that statement? Does it provide you any reassurance whatsoever? Well, it all sounds wonderful, but it will have been very carefully scripted as well to hit the right points with supporters because they have been key issues with supporters. Manchester United, as I said, they are from Manchester. The stadium has not been developed as much as it should have been. It should have been expanded. And Manchester United have stood still in many ways. And Manchester City fans look at how the area around their stadium has been developed. And the ones I speak to are happy about that. There, is, there are side issues to that as to where the money's coming from. And I understand that as well. Debt has been a big issue for Manchester United. A lot of football fans just want to see the team win trophies and they're not really bothered about where the money comes from. But I'll point back again to that survey in The Athletic. A lot of the fans surveyed were actually bothered where the money came from. They were concerned about that. But there's a lot of hypocrisy among football fans as well. People change the tune. And you see that with results, but you also see that with um, any potential suitors for a club like Manchester United. I wouldn't favour, for example, a repeat of the Glazers, where you get another leverage buyout, which loads even more debt onto the club, because that is a realistic possibility as well. But I don't think there's going to be a perfect option here for Manchester United. And that's why I'm sad and that's why I'm a little bit circumspect. Andy, it's always great to get your insights. I'm sure we'll talk again as this story develops, but thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you.